Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to check out the brand new Chromecast with Google TV that was just announced a couple of days ago. One of the main benefits that we have now is they it's no longer just the ability of casting things into a Chromecast. This is now actually running its own version of an entertainment system, which is called Google TV. It's a little bit different than what we've seen with Android TV. So I'm going to walk you through unboxing, setting it up, how to use it and all of the cool new features of the brand new Chromecast with Google TV. This is TK. Well, let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So this is the brand new Google Chromecast with Google TV. This is something very different than what we've seen in the past. In the past, all we've had is just standard Chromecast and Chromecast for the most part, if we've used it, essentially connects to your TV and it becomes a receiving hub to be able to cast things to it. There's multiple versions. There's the 4K, uh, basically the Chromecast Ultra, which for the most part, this one I feel like kind of replaces. Uh, the color that I chose obviously was definitely a unique one. And again, this one does support 4K 60 frames per second. Again, very similar to the one we have with the Chromecast Ultra. The difference again is now we have Google TV running on the actual unit. So it, I don't know if there's any word about it coming back to the older generations, but at least in the current version, this is the only one that supports it. We'll see that there's a few different services that are out of the box going to be supported. Obviously, YouTube, YouTube TV, Netflix, uh, Prime Video, Spotify, Disney Plus, Hulu, and of course, ESPN, Sling, Home, uh, HBO Max, uh, CBS All Access, Stars, and many, many more. This is not the actual list, uh, but uh, just just the list. Uh, other than that, I think it was pretty much straightforward. Uh, obviously, just ask it. This is going to be very heavily, uh, you know, reliant on the assistant service. Uh, last but not least here, setting it up is pretty simple. You connect it to the back of the TV, give it power and use the remote and you're set. You can actually also use your phone, which I will also share with you guys in a few minutes. Uh, but other than that, let's go ahead and open it up the box. So pretty straightforward. We get the actual dongle itself. This is the Google Chromecast uh, with, well, the, Google, the Chromecast with Google TV. Very simple, very easy. Uh, from a size comparison, just kind of to show you guys how they look. It's a lot wider and uh, slightly uh, thinner, basically. But again, it's supposed to be more uh, closely resembling to the, uh, the Chromecast Ultra. Uh, one connector, HDMI, uh, no extension cable as far as I know. And it is not magnetically connected the way we've had it in the old Chromecast. So Chromecast had this kind of nice little uh, docking mechanism so that whenever you're putting them away, they don't just sit like this. This one's pretty good. Uh, the other thing is uh, the cable is not as long, but again, it's intended to be behind your TV, so it should, should not be in a bit of problem. We have one LED light here for indication whenever we're turning it on and if we need to pair it or reset it, so there's a button there for that. A USB-C connector in the back, nice, USB-C all the way, and of course, the Google logo. The remote is also included in the box, matches the color, similar, I was going to say, not necessarily the exact same shade. Uh, we have a few buttons here. We have a D-pad with a selection button, a back, a resistant button, home, mute button, YouTube dedicated button, and Netflix dedicated button, a power and an input uh, button. Now these, uh, the button here for the power as well as the input and the volume rocker on the right side require us to have CEC control on the monitor on the TV that we're using. So it may work with uh, most of them, but depending on your system, it may or may not work. The actual IR option here is in the front. Last but not least is the battery compartment here and you could just basically pop it up, put it back in and put in some batteries. Uh, and they do include some batteries in the actual packaging itself. And the rest of the things in the box are the two AAA batteries to power the remote, a USB-A to USB-C cable with a USB style charger. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Now the setup process is pretty simple. Uh, you just need to connect it to the TV and of course provide the power using the adapter and the power cable that they have. Uh, put the batteries in the remote and you're pretty much set to go. Turn on the TV and of course turn it on to that input and you should be able to see a boot up screen of the actual Chromecast. And at that point we just need to go through the process and wait for it to basically prompt us to be able to start setting it up. Now there's a couple of options we can do. You can either set it up on device or you can set it up directly from your phone. And the way I decided to do it is I went ahead and used my Google home application to add this as a device. So you launch the Google Home, you go in the top left, hit the plus number with the plus sign, and of course add a new device and allow it to discover. Once it discovered it, it asked me to scan the QR code. We did the scanning process and it was pretty straightforward from there. Um, but setting it up is very similar to setting up, let's say a, a smartwatch where it did end up transferring my account. So I didn't need to authenticate my own personal account and it transferred it directly in there. Uh, it gave me some options to be able to download and install some applications as part of the setup process. And I did select a few there. Um, other than that, I would think it was a pretty much straightforward there. It takes a little bit of time, maybe about maybe seven or eight minutes top 
hops. And at that point, you're pretty much set to use it. And it takes you directly into the home screen where you're able to start basically customizing and discovering the different options that we have here. Here we are on the main menu. Um, you have a few options in there. Uh, first, obviously, you'll see is the search. That's going to be a normal search. You click that. It's going to automatically take you into more of a, a discovery kind of an experience. So you have basically the weather, um, asking it things. You know, those are the kind of things you could try to do, as well as basically finding basically, you know, years, movies that were released this year, documentary movies, action, the whole experience on this entire UI is made for content discovery. Uh, it's not very much like the way we've seen Android TV be and how it evolved into the new system. This actually kind of looks a little bit like the original version of Android TV in a more, again, discovery experience. The next tab is for you. Those are based on what you currently have installed on there and subscribe to. So for example, for me, I have Netflix, YouTube, Prime, Disney, uh, YouTube TV, Sling, all of those services. Not all of them I'm subscribed to, but for the most part, those are things that I've used in the past. And it starts giving you basically trending videos. So here, basically you get South Park, obviously, you know, the good place, uh, the Mandalorian is coming in there, which is something that's very nice. And of course, you can kind of go through different sections. Uh, the next section that we have here is movies. Again, this is just more focused on it, so we can switch over to it you do have to go all the way to the top the show is pretty much the same thing apps is where it gets into the installed applications when we went through the installation process and we asked it or it asked us what apps do you want us to install so hbo max is installed disney um, crunchroll i didn't install tubi and crackle or not so these are more of a recommendation but here where it says your apps these are the things i installed so sling hulu hbo max cbs all access daily workout uh, my tuner and then of course geforce now now you're able to also see all of the apps that you've installed by just going all the way to the right side. So it's a simple way of just seeing everything. You'll notice I installed Button Remapper, uh, Explore, and of course, uh, Bug but uh, Butcher. Uh, you do need to have sometimes a controller connected to play some of these games, but I did install Termillion. And of course, YouTube Music, because why not? Now, the system does not have a Play Store the way we have it on Android TV. You actually have to go and search for these apps. So if I go to search for apps, it'll automatically bring up a keyboard for me, or I can actually also use my voice. An example would be the Google Podcast application. I hold the button on the remote for the assistant and I say, show me the Google Podcast app. And then you notice that it automatically answers it with apps that you can actually search for. So the assistant also works as a search function for this. You just have to ask for it. If it is not installed, it'll give you some access. Now, the interesting part is that the Google uh, podcast application is not supported here because it doesn't show up whenever you actually look for it. You do see here there's the Google app for Android TV. There's other things, iHeartRadio, TED. And if I click on the Google app for Android TV, you'll see it'll open it up for me. It'll give me access to it. But it's something I already installed. But it also shows me recommendations. So here it says other apps from Google Play Store, from the Google LLC, similar apps to it. And of course, you can kind of go through and see some of the other applications in there. There's other recommendations and things that you can definitely download and check, or you can go in there by specific category. So you have entertainment, you can go in there, it lists the entertainment applications, you have music and audio, same thing. Um, we can jump into tools, different applications that will help us basically. So download or here, different things that are, again, um, is specifically made for our system. All of these things are simple, are easy. You can just go through education, health, and everything can be actually categorized the same way. It'll take us back up. And then of course, at the end, we have library, which essentially is just a collection of the things that we have for our account. So that's the entire UI. The overall searchability and function here is very simple. Now, if I'm at the home screen and I hit the back button once, it takes me back to for you. But if I hit it one more time, it'll start automatically launching what you can see in right now, which essentially is that daydream almost turning our display into a uh, basically a big photo frame. So it works very nicely. Just again, whenever you're on the for you section, hit the back button once it automatically starts. Obviously that if you leave your device for some time, it'll automatically start by itself. Uh, if I press home, automatically takes me to this uh, section. If I press home and hold it, it's automatically going to open up the settings tab. That's the furthest thing to the right. So an example would be normally I would have to basically scroll all the way to the right where it now recognizes my name and I click on it. It'll open up the section where I have the ability of going to settings as well as the time, which essentially is that daydream function that we have. The other shortcut, as I mentioned, just press and holding uh, the home button on the remote will get you to this section. And this is where we get into the system settings. Very simple, straightforward. You have obviously the network, the Wi-Fi connectivity. It needs Wi-Fi to connect. Um, and keep in mind that the stronger the Wi-Fi, the better the performance, since this technically supports 4K 60 frames per second to connected devices. The second tab after that would be logging into our account. I'm going to skip that since that's primarily the account that we set up our, uh, on our device. And it transfers over when you're setting it up. So essentially, is you're logging in with your Google account to activate or can, you Know, configure this account. Uh, privacy just gives us, as you guys see on the right side, we have location, usage, uh, ads, all those normal stuff under privacy. 
Uh, display and sound gets pretty interesting. We have the CEC option here, which you need to turn on to be able to configure or at least control your TV and your TV needs to have that function. So turning this function helps us basically turn on and be able to turn on and turn off the display. Uh, match content, this is just matching the content on this uh, on the, that you're watching. So it basically makes it more uh, compatible. Uh, advanced uh, display settings, you'll notice right here it says 1080p 60 frames per second for me. And that's because the actual capture device that I'm using can only go to 1080p 60. But I'm going to show you a quick picture that I just took or a video that I just took with my phone when I had it connected to my 4K monitor, the Samsung 4K monitor that I have in the office here. And again, 4K 60 frames per second goodness out of the box, which is amazing because this basically makes it so that it's actually pretty much a four, uh, basically a Chromecast Ultra built into this. Uh, of course, we have the ability of basically going in there, system sound, advanced sound settings, you can customize those. And here you have the automatic option that is set, but you're also able to go to manual, which allows us to actually go through and customize which option do we want to turn on. I'm keeping it on automatic, mostly again, the system that I have right now is not intended to have um, this type of uh, connection. So overall, you can customize it to your preference. Uh, apps are pretty straight for, straightforward here. Here you actually see is a Google Play Store. Now, I can go in here and say open, and this actually gives us access to the Play Store, which is something, again, that we don't have access from the launcher. So I'm not sure why this is here, but this is basically where you would be able to access it if you want to just do normal access of applications. So you have My Apps, uh, and you can just go in there and customize. So you'll notice here under My Apps, this is what I have on the device, what I've installed. Again, all of the customizations that you've had before, but it is under Apps uh, section in the Settings tab, not in the launcher. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can see all apps, app permissions, all the good stuff in there. Uh, system, pretty much standard, accessibility, time and date, language, keyboard, storage, if you want to check it. Uh, it says I have basically 4.4 gigs total space, which is basically out of that. If you go in, you'll notice that, you know, apps will take some things. Uh, miscellaneous available is 1.6 gigs. So not really intended to sideload that many things to it. This is a very, it's intended to basically be a content consumption, not again, an Android TV box. Energy saver, pretty much turn off the display after 30 minutes, or you can also cast to it since this is technically a Chromecast. So um, what we'll go ahead and do also, I want to share with you guys a couple more things. Remote and accessories. This is if you want to be able to add a controller, if you want to play games. Right now, it just has the remote that's automatically configured to it. And of course, help and feedback. This whole time we've been using the remote to control the device. So you see right here, I'm holding the remote. You have all the buttons, all the configurations that we have. We have the back button, the assistant button, the home button. We have a dedicated button for YouTube. We can press that button. It takes us straight into YouTube and again to a pre-configured account. Uh, we also have a dedicated button for Netflix. If I click that, it'll take me straight into Netflix. Very simple, very sim easy and very straightforward. Uh, the good thing too is we can also use the assistant to actually open up things directly within applications. An example, show me videos of TK Bay. And you can see here that it automatically sends me uh, or answers me basically based on searches. So it searched the net and it found that I actually have a lot of video or a lot of content on YouTube. So it shows me right there. So this is my channel. You can see all the other videos that I've created and also videos that I've actually guest hosted on. So this is a video from another channel. So a lot of things like that. Very simple. And of course, uh, if I had any movies made, <laughs> it'll all be able to also kind of recommend things like that for us. Uh, but we can do the exact same thing to actually launch things within certain apps. Open Stranger Things in Netflix. And you'll see right there, it'll jump in. Uh, I'm not going to be playing any videos right now uh, purely because of the copy, uh, because of CE copyright issues here. But for the most part, essentially, you're getting the same experience. Um, I can also do the exact same thing with other apps. Show me videos of young Sheldon on HBO Max. Straightforward, very easy, very, again, as long as you're logged into your account, it'll be able to access it and, of course, customize the entire thing. But what if I don't have a remote and let's say I'm in a situation where I don't have my remote and what I have right now is access to be able to use the uh, Android TV remote that we're able to connect. So I'll go ahead and just use it in front of us here. So essentially, it just gives us access to kind of more of a D-pad configuration that we're able to configure. Uh, I have access to the home button. I can press and hold the home button and it does the exact same function here. I can go back and if I go back to home, it does the same thing. I can open up and launch the daydream function. Um, all in all, the controller works really nicely. We also have the ability of using a touchpad if you want to be able to use it. And of course, a just dedicated button for the assistant to launch it directly. So these are the two ways to control it. You can either use it directly like this, or you can also cast things using the assistant. If you have, uh, let's say a Google Home that you can just ask it to cast something to it.
One of the other ways you could do is connect to it using the Google Home application. Just make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi. Um, you're able to see basically whenever it does go into ambient mode. Right now it's not, but this was the last image we had in there. I can cast my device and of course I can personalize the ambient display. So this was customized originally to be part of my photo album, but let's say I want to be able to cast my device. So I'll go ahead and hit say cast and I'll go ahead and hit start now. What you're seeing essentially now is my display straight on the Google, uh, basically on the new uh, Chromecast. And what you'll notice obviously is it works really nicely. I can actually launch things. I can open up the Google Play Store. Almost everything that I've been done, I can do before, I can do the exact same way. When I'm done, I can actually just go ahead and say disconnect. And again, you can basically cast it directly from the application or do a screencasting directly on your phone. And it works pretty much the exact same way. The only difference is when you're casting your entire device, it's easier to be able to jump from one app to the other as opposed to going into apps that don't support casting. So this actually works a lot nicer. Um, just keep in mind that if you do tilt your device, it does actually orient the display to match your orientation. So it looks pretty good and pretty straightforward straightforward, uh, even though the UI may not look as, as great, uh, but we're able to also share pictures here. So let's say we want to be able to share pictures with some of our friends and you can see it's a lot easier to be able to basically just share images like this or basically go through and double check other things. So this was a picture that I posted the Xperia 5 Mark II. If you haven't, if you haven't checked out that video, it's definitely really, really nice uh, and it's posted directly on my channel. Other than that, once you're done, you'll just go ahead and hit disconnect and it'll disconnect you straight from here. And everything else is pretty much a straightforward connection. It's just easy to configure. Chromecasts have been around for years and we've had them in multiple generations. We obviously have the best, which is the Chromecast Ultra that supports 4K 60 frames per second. And now the Google, well, this new Chromecast is actually for the most part, that exact same one running Google TV. Uh, the form factor is a little bit different, but definitely looks really nice. And of course, the inclusion of a remote now makes it a little bit easier to consume media. You're still able to use the Android TV remote that you have on your smartphone, and you're also able to still use the assistant from any of the connected devices to cast things to it. This is again, still a Chromecast at heart, but the entertainment system that we have running in here is a little bit different than what we've seen with Android TV. I want to mention that this is not intended to be a replacement for Android TV, or at least we haven't heard that yet, because it runs slightly different. Uh, the entire UI for the most part is intended for content discovery and consumption. It's not really intended to be more of a powerhouse. Like where an Android TV, like an Nvidia Shield has external USB ports, you're able to mount things, install things. It also has like a 256 gig hard drive, adding SD cards. This is not trying to do that. This is truly just trying to add a navigation system to allow us to actually enjoy content using it. So start selling for about 50 bucks right now. If you pick up the pre-order one with the 89.99 one, you're actually able to get six months worth of Netflix. And that's roughly about almost 60 bucks, 60 to 70 bucks worth of uh, free stuff with it. So I'd recommend you picking up that package as opposed to just picking up the standard one. You're getting a Chromecast Ultra in a cool new color with all of the new benefits of the Google TV UI built in. Hopefully the Google TV UI will be coming to earlier generations of Chromecast, no word on that. Uh, but I would imagine hopefully that if there is a plan, we'll hear about that soon from Google. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. Of course, I'll see you guys in the next video.